Biodiversity is the multitude of living organisms and the different environments that enrich the planet. The soil is an immense reservoir of biodiversity, rich with organisms of small and very small dimensions. Earthworms are an important indicator of soil health and soil biodiversity. The last book Charles Darwin published is about earthworms. The title is The Formation of Vegetable Mold to the Action of Worms. This book was published in 1881 by Murray, the same publisher that printed Darwin's fundamental text on the evolution of species. Unfortunately, Darwin didn't classify the species he studied by giving them scientific names. He primarily studied the population of worms that live in his garden of his house in Down, in the south of England, where he spent a large part of his life. In fact, in his text, Darwin used two terms to refer to worms. He spoke about worms and earthworms. The most interesting part of the book is the description of a species called Lumbricus terrestris, a species that drags leaf litter from the soil surface into their tunnels. During the night and when it rains, the litter leaves are pulled inside the worm's tunnels, primarily in the part that leads to the soil surface in the first 10-15 centimeters. In this book, Darwin states the importance of earthworms in synergy with the activity of bacteria and fungi and many small invertebrates in constructing and determining the soil characteristics. The share which worms have taken in the formation of the layer of vegetable mold which covers the whole surface of the land in every moderately humid country, is the subject of the present volume. This mould is generally of a blackish colour and a few inches in thickness. In different districts it differs but little in appearance, although it may rest on various subsoils. The uniform fineness of the particles of which it is composed is one of its chief characteristic features. As I was led to keep in my study during many months worms in pots filled with earth, I became interested in them and wished to learn how far they acted consciously and how much mental power they displayed. In the world scale, about 5,000 species of earthworms are known, but let's examine the country of Italy. The Italian fauna is rich with 90 distinct species, each one with a particular ecological role. The species of worms can be divided into five ecological categories. The deep burrowers, often very large, like Eophila tellini, which produces predominantly vertical tunnels in the soil. Also, Lumbricus terrestris, the species that Darwin studied, digs deep tunnels that are predominantly vertical in the soil. The epigean worms live instead in the leaf litter laying on the soil surface. The endogean earthworms live predominantly in the soil and only rarely go to the soil surface. A few species live also in waterways or in very humid areas, like Aesaniella tetraedra. The last group includes species that live predominantly in manure and compost, and they are never found in other environments. Here is a curious example of the tube-shaped cast produced by Octodrilus mima, a species that has been found only in a restricted area in the eastern Friuli region of Italy, a hilly collier region where they produce one of the most appreciated vines in Italy. 
it is very likely that the soil characteristics in this area are strictly related to the activity of this species of deep burrowing earthworm. Earthworms are part of the order of the Anelids. Their bodies are elongated of various colors depending on the species, comprised of many rings, each of which has four pairs of bristles which are normally orientated towards the posterior end of the body. With the movements of elongation and contraction of the body, these bristles allow the worm to stop and advance, even underground. To go backwards, the bristles become orientated towards the front of the body and the mechanism functions in the same way. Going forward, the worm swallows soil particles together with any type of organic matter, which is then stored in the body and metabolized. After being enriched by gastric juices, the soil and organic matter is then excreted through the anal orifice as casts that provide nutrients for the soil. These casts are visible on the soil surface, especially after it rains. We are looking at the recently fallen leaves and some that have fallen a few weeks ago, which are drier. Note this accumulation of leaves here and under here where there are one or more vertical tunnels of Lumbricus terrestris. During this time in autumn, Lumbricus terrestris is pulling the leaves into the tunnel's entrance and then inside the first 10 to 15 centimeters of the same gallery. Now we will try to remove the leaves and observe the action of Lumbricus terrestris on these same leaves once they have been decomposed by fungi and bacteria. Here we can see what remains of this leaf matter, little fragments of ribs that cannot be easily digested. Vincenzo Tanara, an Italian agronomist from 17th century, published with much success several editions of L'Economia del Cittadino in Villa, which is a treaty on agronomy customs for farmers, which in many ways repeats ideas of previous authors. But at the same point, Tanara was extremely innovative with the idea of the food chain and the importance of earthworms. In fact, when Tanara suggested a way to measure soil fertility, he said, when people till the soil, birds like starlings, magpies and ravens come to the fields According to Tanara, this is a positive sign of health because these birds are eating the worms and little organisms and these worms and other creatures are indicators of soil fertility. This was probably the first time that animals that live in the soil, especially earthworms, were perceived in a positive way during a time when most people thought worms were a danger for a plant root and therefore had the potential to cause rot and damage plants and their roots. The benefits to agriculture caused by the existence of earthworms are related to the increased soil fertility caused by the concentration of the earthworms' casts and the nutrients that the earthworms extract from the decomposing material they eat. This source of nutrients, which is completely accessible to plant roots, can contain up to five times the quantity of nitrogen, seven times the quantity of phosphate, and up to 11 times greater the amount of potassium compared to what is found naturally in the soil. The tunnels, in addition, improve the aeration and contribute greatly to facilitate soil humidity. 
Eophila tellini is the biggest Italian earthworm. It can reach a length of 80 centimeters and is classified as a deep burrowing species. Achille Tellini, a natural science student who later became well known discovering Eophila Tellini by chance in 1888. The young man was studying the glacial phenomena of the river Tagliamento when he found the incredible earthworm under a huge boulder he was removing in the glacial moraine of Ragogna. One month later, Daniele Rosa, a professor at the University of Turin, described the earthworm as a new species, and he dedicated the name to Achille Tellini, who discovered it. In reality, this giant earthworm was already known in Carnia as the worm of the rain, because it's visible on the soil surface after strong autumn and spring rainstorms. Today, we know that Eophila Tellini lives primarily on south-facing slopes up to an altitude of 1,500 meters in a restricted area of the pre-alpine Italian area, ranging from the Tagliamento River to the plateau of Asiago and with the southern border of the hills of Conegliano. It's interesting to reflect on the fact that Eophila tellini and Octodrilus mima, both species belonging to the category of deep burrowers, have a restricted area of distribution. These species are influential in soil formation and development, and they are endemic to two areas of great importance for wine production. The quality of the wines from these areas are closely related to the activity of these earthworms. We are now with Marina's Gubin, the owner, along with our family, of an organic vineyard. This is a very old vineyard in the Pedamontana zone of the region of Friuli Venezia Giulia called Chaval John. What do you think about the earthworms, Octodrilus mima, and other earthworms in your vineyard? We especially see the earthworms when it rains. Here we see the huge casts and tunnels, which are perhaps essential for creating this soft and aerated soil. If there weren't earthworms, the plants would asphyxiate because this type of soil is very rich in clay. From the hills of Collio, we move to the eastern plain of Veneto, to Pramaggiore, where we find the highest concentration of organic vineries. At the Vinar Le Carline, we have found two species of earthworms of significant size, Octodrilus complanatus and Lumbricus terrestris. These worms are deep burrowers, and therefore they form very large and deep tunnels which allow the soil to rapidly absorb water, increase the penetration of air into the soil, and therefore improve the respiration of the roots. In some, these worms favor the formation of an excellent humus. Daniele Piccinin, owner of the winery, explained to us the benefit of organic management of the vineyard. The reason we became organic agricultural producers was to preserve the environment where we live, to preserve the land and to search for ways to improve the land if possible. Through years of experience, we made the choice to fertilize the soil with organic and fresh substances and to fertilize with natural products, which has allowed for an excellent equilibrium and a very important presence of earthworms and other useful insects that work the soil. We have seen that chopping the weeds in the interrow spaces and leaving the leaves that fall in autumn through spring creates an optimal substrate for the activity of these earthworms, and not only earthworms, but also other insects. When we behold a wide, turf-covered expanse, we should remember that its smoothness, on which so much of its beauty depends, is mainly due to all the inequalities which have been slowly leveled by worms. The plough is one of the most ancient and most valuable of man's inventions, but long before he existed, the land was in fact regularly ploughed, and still continues to be ploughed, by earthworms.